good to be here with you all. I am not preaching today. Uh, instead, I'm just going to... The topic I was given was presence, and I sat down six or seven times to write a sermon, uh, and I felt like what the Lord was inviting us to do this morning wasn't hear a sermon. I, I love sermons. I love hearing sermons. I love giving them. But I felt like the invitation this morning was to practice the presence. So that's that's what we're actually going to do. We're going to practice the presence. And something Zach said to me, I think he said it in School of Revival or maybe another context. I hear him speak in many contexts. But uh, something he said has just rattled around my brain uh, nonstop. Zach's good like that. Uh, but he was talking about Scripture and he was talking about how Scripture is inherently a bit confusing. Uh, that you read these passages and you're like, what does that mean? And he was talking about how part of the reason for the way that the scripture is assembled, the way it's designed is because it's actually designed to be read in community. It's actually designed to be understood in community. Community is actually the vessel that God chooses to pour his presence out on. So as we practice presence, we're, we are going to do a bit of discussion stuff this morning. So I'd invite you to um, continue to social distance as you do that, but you will need to be with some people that you can kick some questions around because we're going to have a bit of uh, kicking around questions of the, around the presence and we're going to do some practicing of it. Uh, but firstly, I figured I have the microphone so I could quickly do a School of Revival plug while I am here. Uh, because many of you probably heard the announcements we made a few weeks ago. We have uh, changed our schedule. We are no longer Wednesday, Thursday night. We are now Thursday night and Sunday, 4 p.m. till 6.30 p.m. So hopefully that uh, makes it a bit more flexible for some people, but also that means that night service is back. Night service is hosted by School of Revival. We're really excited about it. Uh, that is kicking off on, I think, the 30th is a Sunday night, uh, and that will be the first one. So invite you to come along to that. Uh, it will be a lot of fun. It's going to be us focusing on the Lord's presence. Uh, we're going to be using some School of Revival curriculum in that space. Uh, but also applications are still open for School of Revival for 2022. We've also lowered the uh, tuition for this year because of the change to the schedule. So this is the best and easiest year to do School of Revival. So if it's something that's been on your heart, something you've been considering, something you've been unsure about, I would encourage you to talk to the Lord about it because this is the year to do it. Um, we've already got some people signed up and they are an amazing bunch of students who are really hungry. We have an incredible team with us this year. It's going to be the best year yet. I know it for sure. So yeah, here's what I'm going to do. I'll just get you guys to close your eyes. Lord, if you are inviting anyone to do School of Revival this year, we just ask that you would stir their hearts right now. That you would just stir up a hunger in them, a curiosity and excitement. And Lord, as we move into talking about your presence this morning, we just thank you that you are here, that you are good. I just invite you all to just become aware of him, however that looks for you. Maybe this is something you're used to doing or maybe this is new to you. But we just want to become aware of him. Because his presence is him. His presence is him. So we are just becoming aware of who he is. We are becoming aware of who he is in us. We're becoming aware of who he is on us, who he is around us. So if you're not sure how to do that, you might begin by just cultivating some thankfulness for who he is to you. Who has he been to you in this season or in previous seasons? It's been seasons where he's been my strength. It's been seasons where he's been my refreshing, my hope, my peace my joy. So just take a moment and think about who he's been to you in previous seasons.
truth is he is closer than your skin. Thank you, Father. We just invite your peace. We just ask for a fresh awareness of your nearness this morning. Thank you, Father. All right, I'm going to get you guys to kick around two questions real quick. So I kind of said some things just then, but here's the first question that I want you to, you can do this in pairs, triplets, whatever, um, just with some people around you. It can even be your family. You don't need to leave your bubble. That is okay. Um, but what do we mean when we talk about God's presence is the first question. And the second question, I'm going to repeat them both. What for you, what verses, passages, stories, what things from the Bible come to mind for you when we're talking about the presence? So first question is, what do we mean when we talk about the presence? Second question is, what from the Bible, what from Scripture comes to mind when talking about God's presence? So one more time, what do we mean when we talk about the presence? And what from Scripture comes to mind for you personally when we're talking about the presence? All right, so I'm going to give you guys like five minutes to chat about that in your conglomerations. Okay. Seemed like great discussions were happening. You will get a chance to... I've got another couple questions that a bit later you're going to get to talk about in that same group. So you'll get to continue your great discussions. Uh, but I, I would love to hear some of the things that were talked about. You can just yell them out to me from there. Um, when we're talking about God's presence, what are we talking about? The fact that you can tangibly feel Him the fact that you can tangibly feel him and experience him. Fantastic. His nearness and nowness. His nearness and nowness. I love that, Zach. His nearness and nowness. A taste of heaven. A taste of heaven. Yeah, we're invited to taste and see of his goodness. Being. Sorry? Being. being, yes. Yes, his being. And we're invited to just be in him. I think Graham Cook says that our one job is to be the beloved. Which really lowers the stakes. Does anyone else want to call out an answer? His joy? His joy, yeah, I love that. All right, second question. What from Scripture springs to mind for you guys when talking about God's presence? Be still and know that I am God. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of that being the beloved thing, right? Like we're just being still. We're just being. We're just being in Him and knowing that He is God. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? I will never leave or forsake you. I will never leave or forsake you. He's promised to always be with us. Yes. Yes. Psalm 23. I love that promise to be with us even even through difficult times any others adam walking in the garden the temple yes love that emmanuel god with us yeah i think some of the things that i've been thinking about um obviously in genesis we start we start with presence. We start with Adam and Eve being in the garden, walking with God, dwelling in his presence. Uh, and then as, as the scripture moves on, the Israelites are wandering the wilderness with a cloud of... Sorry, my brain just collapsed. But they're following the cloud. They're following the pillar of fire. Um, they're following his presence. They are wandering, following his presence. And then... The Israelites have the ark and God is dwelling amongst them and they are gathering around his presence and they are worshipping him around his presence. And then we have Jesus who, uh, as Chris just shared in Matthew, it talks about 
God being called Emmanuel, God with us. So it goes from him being this thing that dwells uh, and they gather around to him walking amongst us again, him being with us again. And then we have Holy Spirit. We have God within us. Uh, Paul talks about the temple and he talks about us being the temple, but he also talks about us being the temple. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 3, uh, verse 16, he says, Don't you realize that together you have become God's inner sanctuary and that the Spirit of God makes his permanent home in you? Now, if someone desecrates God's inner sanctuary, God will desecrate him. For God's inner sanctuary is holy, and that is exactly who you are. Paul, also in Ephesians and also in uh, 1 Corinthians 6, again, uses this illustration of the temple, but he's talking about us individually being the temple. So together we are the temple. Together we are the dwelling place of God's presence, but also individually we get to be that. So in a moment, I'm going to get you guys to uh, answer another question together. And the question is, I just want you to think about what are times that you and maybe you haven't had many of these times yet. Maybe you've had lots. But what are the times that you've been profoundly impacted by the Lord's presence? Um, I'm going to share a story and then I'll probably share some other stories after you guys get time to answer that question. But I think for me, one of the times... Um, Because God is so good. He's so big. He's so multifaceted. And his presence is multifaceted. In his presence, we might experience peace. In his presence, we might experience joy. In his presence, we might experience hope. Uh, I think of moments where I've been at my lowest and I've just been crying out to the Lord. And his hunger, hunger is his presence. So in those moments where I've been calling out to the Lord, I, I can think of some moments where I'm like, Lord, why aren't you meeting me? I'm so hungry for you. Uh, and it's only in hindsight that I realize that hunger is actually him meeting me. That hunger is a gift. Hunger is his presence. But one of the moments that um, I really enjoyed seeing his presence at work uh, was when I was, I, I got to do some ministry in Guadalajara, Mexico. Uh, and we were doing some ministry at some um, like black market stalls. Uh, so there was just like rugs and blankets on the ground and uh, people were standing behind them. There were all these like assorted goods on these blankets um, that the people we were with, like obviously I don't know how accurate this is, but the people that we were with were telling us that a lot of those goods were stolen. And um, certainly w we ended up talking to these two men that were in front of a brothel um, that worked for the brothel and were running a stall in front of the brothel and we ended up talking to these two men um, through a translator obviously because my Spanish is bad I can say pass me the cow and that's about it <laughs> which I mean that killed in the Mexican churches there they love that um, but it wasn't very useful when talking to black market dealers on the street <laughs> but we got to talk to these two individuals and we asked them if we could pray for them um, they were like sure so we just asked these two men if they would put out their hands. And you could tell that these men had had uh, like hard lives, that they had, they looked older than they probably were um, because they'd had that kind of life. But we asked them if they would put their hands out and if we could pray for them. And we just prayed something simple. We just asked that the Lord would touch them with his presence. Uh, and these two men that worked at this black market stall in front of this brothel, they both began to weep. And they both began to say through the translator, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. And the Lord just was touching their hearts and was ministering to their hearts. And we got to lead these two men to Jesus, not because of anything that we did. We were just there, just inviting his presence in that moment. And his presence touched these two men uh, and they gave their lives to Jesus. And it was beautiful. So here's the question. What have been a moment or some moments that you have been profoundly impacted by the Lord's presence. So I'm going to give you guys, I'll give you guys another five minutes just to chat about that in your conglomerations. Let me repeat the question because otherwise I'm going to get asked to. 
what are some times or a time where you've been profoundly impacted by the presence of God? Alrighty. I'm not going to get anyone to shout out a story. Um, but I did hear I did hear snippets kind of floating through the crowd, and it sounded like there were some beautiful testimonies being shared. So thank you for sharing of your history with the Lord with each other. Um, was anyone impacted by anyone else's story? Just give me a wave. Yeah, Chris is waving. She was impacted by Kate's story. Throughout the Bible, we see people encountering the Lord's presence, and we see it looking really different in different contexts. We see it looking really different for different people. Uh, There's stories in the Bible of people shaking. There's stories in the Bible of people falling down as if dead. There's stories in the Bible um, of all sorts of encounters with the God's presence. And I think what I would define the presence as um, is a supernatural awareness of God in us. And we have probably all um, had varying experiences of that supernatural awareness of him in us uh, in different moments, in different experiences. But it is actually something that we can practice. It is actually something that we can make time to focus on. Because the reality is uh, focus is hard. (laughs) Like There's so many distractions. There's so many opportunities to be distracted. So we can practice the presence and it actually requires practicing focusing. We're going to do exactly that in a moment. And this is such a great opportunity to practice that because there is so many distractions here. Uh, There's other people, there's children, there's birds, there's the cars that go by, the jets that go by, uh, the mozzies, the flies. Uh, So it is such a great opportunity to practice the presence, to practice tuning in, to practice putting aside the concerns, the feelings, the expectations of the day, and to just dwell on who he is in us. I've gotten the privilege of seeing God move in a lot of incredible ways in my lifetime. And I fully believe that none of those had anything to do with me and everything to do with who he is. But nearly all of them came from a place of just cultivating my awareness of my union in him. The Bible says we are seated in heavenly places with Christ. So we can become aware of the reality of heaven and we can operate from that place. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're just going to focus... On his presence. I'm going to facilitate a little bit of a guided encounter. Uh, God is the best communicator there is. He created the concept of communication. He is the best communicator there is. Uh, And he created your imagination. We really believe that he can communicate through your imagination. Sometimes our imagination can get distorted. It can get perverted. But the Lord created it. It is a good thing. There's a thing you're designed to have, and we really believe he can communicate through it. So in a moment, what I'm going to get you to do is I'm going to get you to cultivate that awareness of his presence, focus on him, and then I'm going to, with your eyes closed, I'm going to get you to picture some things, and we're going to invite Jesus to talk to you through those moments. Um, We're just going to have a little bit of a guided encounter time where we're going to invite the Lord to be speaking to us, to be ministering to us. And this is just one tool that you can use to practice the presence, that you can use in your own time to just be like, Lord, I want to talk to you. Uh, And you can kind of follow something like this. All right, so I'll just get you guys to just close your eyes and let's just start by just focusing on his nearness, focusing on his goodness.
And if you find yourself getting distracted, that's okay. It's because you have a brain. So that's good. Uh, but just pull your focus back to him. I want you to just become aware of your body. Sometimes we experience him on our body. I will sometimes just feel like this weight, <laughs> just the weight of his glory on me. And it just feels like this heavy, comforting weight. Sometimes I've experienced his presence like fire on my feet where I've literally felt like the, not in a painful way, but in a really vivid way, like flames lapping up my legs. It's often how he tells me he's wanting to heal someone. Sometimes you might feel a cool breeze, a tingling, a warmth. At the moment, if you feel a cool breeze, it might be something else. Just become aware of him. You might just be experiencing his comfort. You might be experiencing a swelling of hope. Just keeping your eyes closed. If you're experiencing something of his presence, even if it's just, you feel good. Why don't you just shout out what you're feeling to me, just in a word. Peace. That's beautiful. Is anyone else feeling peace? I love that. That's beautiful. just stay in this place for a moment. One of the first times where I really experienced the presence of God, um, I was at a conference uh, that Phil and Maria Mason were actually speaking at. Uh, and throughout this conference, people had been uh, being prayed for and they'd been falling down and experiencing joy and all sorts of things that I, at that point, never experienced. And it was pretty confronting to me. It felt pretty uncomfortable to watch. Uh, and I remember there was a moment where a man was praying for me. And I felt I felt that weight of the Lord's glory. And I, I, I was wobbling a bit. And I remember in that moment, I said to the Lord, like, if this is you, you're going to have to knock me on my butt because I'm not going down otherwise. Like, I need to know that this is you. So if this is you, I need you to just like lay me out flat. I'm not just going to fall otherwise. And the Lord in that moment, he rebuked me in that beautiful, painful, but beautiful way that he sometimes has. 
And he, he t- asked me why I needed to control it. <laughs> and he invited me to let go of control and to trust him and just fall back. And I think experiencing his presence often requires letting go. Letting go of expectations that it's going to look a certain way. Letting go of control, letting go of need to be... Just letting go. Alrighty. So just with your eyes closed, I just want you to picture yourself in a place where you feel safe. The place that you feel the most safe in the world. Maybe that's your bedroom. Maybe that's out in nature somewhere. Maybe it's a nice hot tub. Just a place you feel safe and comfortable. I just want you to picture Jesus coming into that space. And he's happy to see you there. He's got a big smile on his face and he wraps you in a big warm embrace. And he's got something to show you this morning. So I just want you to picture Jesus taking you by the hand and he's leading you through a door. And as you walk through that door, I just want you to have a look around in the space that Jesus has led you into. What is the space? Why don't you ask him about it? Jesus, what is this place? Jesus, why have you brought me here? Just got two more questions for Jesus. So I just want you to ask Jesus, is there anything he wants to show you here? And just take a moment and picture yourself exploring the space with Jesus, going where he leads you, letting him show you anything he has to show you. And I just want you to ask Jesus, is there anything you're inviting me to let go of or lay down in this season? Last question. Jesus, is there anything you are inviting me to pick up in this season?
we've been feeling like the Lord's been saying that for us 2022 is going to be a year of hope. I feel like he's been inviting me to pick up hope this year. So Jesus, we just thank you for everything that you've been speaking this morning. We just thank you that you are here, that you are with us, and that we can always choose to focus on who you are. That we can always choose to set aside the things of the day and become aware of who you are in that moment. And Lord, I thank you that you are with us, that you are with us in every moment, that you are with us in the hard moments, that you are with us in the good moment, and you always are wanting us to be aware of you in those moments, Father. I just thank you for the gift of community, that we get to be the vessel you pour out your presence in, that we get to be your temple together. So how we're going to wrap is I'd love for you to just pray for each other. You guys have shared about experiences you've had with the presence I'd love for you to just pray for each other to experience an increased uh, amount of encounters with his presence. So that's that's how we're going to, um, unless Laura has other things. Is that fine? Okay. Uh, sorry, Michelle, I kind of changed the plan on you. but um, So I'd just love for you to pray in your groups. Just pray for each other to experience and encounter more of the Lord's presence in this coming season. Uh, And then when you're done with that, thank you for coming. Thanks for being part. And that's the official end of our service. It was nice spending time with you all.